Hey everybody, welcome back to this week's episode of Flick News. Isola here, and if you're new, this is a segment that we do on Flick Direct that gives you a fraction of the information of movie news that has been released in the past week. So grab your popcorn, sit back, relax, and let's get this started. First up, we have some potential news about a sequel to the Hellraiser reboot that came out in 2022. I say potential in quotes because although nothing is on the books, there has been a lot of chatter, and I think a lot of people just really want to see it. So fingers crossed this is happening. Odessa Azion, who starred in the reboot, uh, did an interview and basically said that nothing's ever going to be official, but that doesn't mean it's not going to happen. I mean, we all want a little more chains and blood and pinhead, you know, and I think they really did a good job on the reboot. It kept your interest going and we kind of want to see what happens to her character after everything that happened and the choices that she had to make. But we don't really know what route it would go. Would it take that route and follow her on the journey and trying to stop people from opening the cube? Hopefully people have learned the lessons. Don't ever just start trying to open up a cube, okay? I'm just throwing it out there. Um, but I think that would be a good idea, just having someone else have the cube fall into their lap and maybe she's the one that helps to try to stop them from making the same mistakes that she did and then throw in all the gore and the blood and all that fun, crazy, gory stuff. Stay tuned for more information, and once I get it, I'll let you know what's happening. So I have a very eclectic taste in music. I'd probably say the only genre that I never really went full force into was country. I do like some of the country songs, but I just never really got into it like some of my family members. But when I was young, my grandmother introduced me to a lot of different types of music. And one of the groups that I fell in love with was the Beatles. And I know some people either love them or really hate them. And there's this whole, we prefer Pink Floyd or the Rolling Stones over the Beatles, but I actually like the three of those bands. So I'm fine with whatever. Anyway, Back in February, it was announced that Sam Mendes with Sony was going to be producing four biopics, one for each of the Beatles. And that's really amazing because each of them has a very different story. And it would be kind of nice to see where they started and where they finished. Um, now, unfortunately, there's only two left, but I'm hoping that they'll also have a say in what is going to happen in the movie, especially if it's their own, because it obviously is their story. Anyway, we actually got some news this week that they have announced who the Fab Four will be in these movies and in, I'm assuming, the one whole one about the group. First, we have Paul Mescal, who will be playing Paul McCartney. How appropriate that his name is Paul. <laughs> And then next, we have Harris Dickinson, who will be playing John Lennon. And honestly, those two are probably some pretty hard shoes, big shoes to fill, I guess you would say. Um, but don't count out Ringo and George. Um, and for that, we have Charlie Rowe as George Harrison and Barry Cogan as Ringo. So I'm very excited to see where this goes. It was actually very interesting because they announced that they would have full rights to the music as well, which means we're going to hear a lot of their music coming back. And I hope that kind of gets the younger generation to kind of listen and enjoy their music. Um, it really did make me happy because I watched the Sinead O'Connor documentary and Prince's estate, well, mostly his half-sister, refused to allow them to use Nothing Compares to You. Now, this may be a fun fact, but Prince actually wrote and sang that song originally. But it didn't really become popular, very popular, until Sinead O'Connor sang it. And that's not to say that the Prince version isn't good. 
It's just Sinead's was a lot better. Um, and when that part of the story came up when she was singing that, it just didn't hit as hard and it didn't make that much of an impact because you didn't have the song playing. So I'm very excited to hear that they will be using all of their music. Well, they got a lot of songs, so they're gonna have to pick and that's gonna be a hard choice. So I'm glad I don't have to make that decision. But back to the actors. So they actually, it should be said alleged. And that's primarily because nothing is set in stone. I have only seen chatter of that this is the alleged crew. Hopefully, fingers crossed, that's who it's going to be because these guys, they'll, they'll be perfect for the roles. And I'm, again, very excited about this because I can't wait to hear the music on the big screen and just kind of see how their lives work because I only know a snippet of what has been out there in the past. So stay tuned, and when I hear more, I will let you know what's going on, and especially confirm if uh, this is the cast. Okay, I feel like I say I'm excited a lot about the things that I talk about, which I guess is good that I do this because I get to share my excitement with you guys. But I want you to know that it is really true excitement. I have a lot of hobbies and a lot of interests, and all of these kind of fall into what I like. Um, and one of those hobbies is actually reading. Um, I used to read pretty much a book a week and sometimes even more depending on how big they were. Uh, towards the end, Harry Potter, th those books got really big, uh, but they were still enjoyable. Well, Suzanne Collins, who wrote the Hunger Games series, actually announced that she is writing a new prequel, and it's called Sunrise on the Reaping. And if that wasn't enough, Lionsgate also confirmed that they're already working on a film adaptation. I mean, the book hasn't even come out, and they're already jumping on it, which is kind of exciting because I think they'll be able to kind of help with where the storyline goes. Um, and Suzanne will also be able to give her input as to where it should go as well. Um, and I really hope that they do follow the book more because as we've spoken about in the past, more often than not, the movies don't really hold up to the books. And it's not their fault. It's really difficult to cram all of that information from a 600 page book, maybe even more, into a two, two and a half hour movie. So we kind of have to give them a little leeway, but so long as you keep that storyline entertaining, we're gonna watch it. Now, if announcing the film adaptation before the book came out wasn't exciting enough, they've already got a date that they're gonna premiere it, which is November of 2026. They are not wasting any time trying to get this out. And I don't blame them because the most recent Hunger Games did really, really well, and a lot of us are big fans. So we're going to definitely jump on the opportunity to read another book and see another movie. Now, on social media, the Hunger Games uh, Instagram page, I believe it was, said that it'll be around the 50th Hunger Games, which uh, is the second quarter quell. Um, obviously, that is well before Katniss um, and the Uprising. So it'll be interesting to see what actually happened during those games. I'm sure it's just going to be crazy, psychotic. You know, it's like a social experiment, you know, to see how people will react in certain situations. Will you help someone else? Will you kill them? I mean, there can only be one, right? Like the Highlander. And finally, because of the interview, and all the reels that we have been posting on Instagram and even TikTok, I figured it would be silly not to mention anything about Bad Boys Ride or Die. That came out this weekend and they grossed as of this morning, which is Sunday, $56 million. $56 million. That is excellent. That is an excellent opening weekend. And it's not really surprising because look, we do like Martin Lawrence and Will Smith, and even after some controversy, which will not be talked about because it's been way too long, he's still a great actor, 
and we just kind of want to see all that action and suspense and they work really well together. And that's what the audiences thought because they were all run into the theaters this weekend, hence why they made $56 million. Now, I'm going to have to go back and watch the last one because I honestly don't remember how it ended. I'm not sure if anything's going to lead into the new one, but I just want to make sure I'm prepared when I see this because obviously I am going to go and see this. If Allison and Nathan liked it, it's pretty safe to say it's going to be a good one. Now, are you going to see it? What are you expecting from this? I'd be very curious to see where you think it's going before you actually see it. So leave a comment and let me know. Now, I'm not going to give you any information about this because, look, the movie's already out. I'm not going to give spoilers. And I don't want spoilers either, so I'm not looking anything up. But let's chat about it. When you see it, come back and we'll have a little discussion. And with that, this concludes this week's episode of Flick News. Be sure to like and subscribe to both of our channels to make sure you get all of your movie and television news. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.